We've been talking about gender discrimination in the workplace and the glass ceiling for decades. Usually the conversation focuses on salary or the lack of women CEOs. Broad numbers are tossed out, like the fact that women make 87 cents for every dollar that a man makes. But through a two and a half year investigation, we've found that the wage gap is a symptom of an even bigger problem. Most people think that the glass ceiling is at the top of an organization, but it's actually much lower than that. Our analysis shows that by almost every measure, women are outnumbered, outranked, and outearned. Women's careers are stalling out at mid-level management, many rungs below the executive level. This is the power gap between men and women. We've collected public sector salary records from institutions across the country that shape Canadians' lives. These are the places that educate the next generation, build your transit, manage housing, daycare and healthcare policy, they sell alcohol and cannabis, regulate industry and get hydro to your home. The bottom line is that women are not well represented among decision makers, especially women of color. You can learn more about our methodology on our website, and we've created a lookup tool where you can explore all of the different companies and organizations in our data set. You can filter by province to check your local city hall or your university or different crown corporations and provincial ministries. We collected our data in 2018, before COVID-19 had devastated the economy and sent women's employment numbers to its lowest levels in decades. Today, experts say the situation is likely much worse. So let's dig into our data. In total, 171 organizations provided the globe with detailed data. Of those, 143 had more men. 117 paid men more on average. One of the ways that we measured power was checking the number of men and women in different leadership positions. At the executive level, men outnumbered women in about three quarters of the organizations. In about 10% of the time, the representation was equal. To better understand where women are in each organization, we examine the gender divide at different salary levels. This is where you can really see the careers of women stalling out. Take the BC Oil and Gas Commission, for example. In the lowest salary band, women represent 55% of employees, but by the highest one, there's only 15%. Universities showed this trend most clearly. In the lower salary bands, representation is pretty even, but from there, the numbers steadily drop. By the end, women represent just a fraction of top earners. We weren't able to capture detailed statistics on race for the entire workforce. We relied on the gender probability of first names to identify men and women, and names are not a reliable indicator of race. We did research the backgrounds of hundreds of women in the top one percentile of earners. Of everyone in this bracket, just 3% identified as women of color. If you're wondering why we focused on the public sector, it's because we had no choice. This is the only detailed salary data that's available in Canada, and the experts who reviewed our findings say it's likely much worse in the private sector. And let's take a second to address the fact that this is a project that deals with a very binary framing of gender, and not everyone identifies as a man or woman. There is no question that non-binary, trans, and two-spirit people face significant barriers at work. It just wasn't possible to measure statistically with data, but it's an area we will absolutely be exploring in future reporting. In future Power Gap stories, we'll dig into how other countries are tackling this issue and what needs to happen in Canada. The first step is actually seeing the problem beyond one broad statistic. For the first time, this data allows us to drill into individual workplaces and see where women are hitting barriers, because you can't fix what you can't see.